Hey there, Groovesters and Groove Stars. Ridgely here with another Groove Growth program with a dear friend. We go back a long ways, back to before we had so many wrinkles. You know, there was a time when we didn't have quite as many. Uh, mentor, coach, extraordinary individual, and an author. And I'm looking forward to having a conversation about his newest book, my very good friend, David Wood. David, so great to speak with you. I know you're out there in Hollywood, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Yep. Moved to Hollywood to enjoy acting. Um, it's good to talk to you, man. And I know our topic today is authenticity and being real in the world and all the benefits that come from that, including business success. I like how you and I started before we hit record. Um, you said, how are you? Yeah. And, I, I, you know, I could have just said what everyone else says. Oh, I'm good. How are you? Yeah. But because it's you. And because I try and practice the, the truth, I said, well, right now, this is what's going on. And to be honest, I've had a hell of a week. I'm really struggling. And we got into it. Yeah, We got into it. And I got to be revealed. And, and with an old friend, uh, I didn't have to pretend anything. And so thank you for that. And I think that's an example, hopefully, of us modeling uh, what I want the world to do in business settings, in relationship settings, is to actually find a way to artfully be real and be yourself instead of, oh, I'm good, how are you? I'm not going to yeah. go into all this other stuff because it might be embarrassing or it might be awkward. No, there are ways to do it, and I'm sure we'll get into those. Yeah, exactly right. And, and it makes the process of dialogue and sharing a co-creative experience. As opposed to being, hey, let me ask you questions so you can monologue, right? Which happens all the time. Instead, we're going to create something together. We don't know where it's going exactly. We just know that there's a lot to share, some really valuable stuff. Uh, and all of the members of the Groove community will benefit from that, as well as our global YouTube audience, which is growing by the day, which is super cool. So yeah. let yeah, me ask and, you. And, and when if we if one person is willing to go a little deeper because we need heroes to lead the way if you're willing to go a little deeper even at the checkout counter and you, like sometimes i'll say what's been the favorite moment of your day so far if you had to pick one you know or someone or someone says how are you and you say you know I'd like to say I'm doing really well but it's been a, it's been a bit of a day if someone's willing to be real that gives that gave you a chance to say, oh, I totally get it. I had this happen to me and whatever. I'm like, well, you know, hearing that, I feel a little better about it. Like I'm not the only one. And then I had an insight and we're pinging back and forth in reality. Yeah. Instead of me presenting a front to the world and showing you a shiny face and you presenting a front and showing a shiny face, I think it's hurting the world. And so- Let's stop doing that. You know, it's funny. I, got, I just got to share this quick story. So I'm in the grocery store a couple of, about a week and a half ago. And I go to the counter and I generally try to pick whoever's looking the most grumpy. So if they're the grumpy person and I play this game, how can I make you smile? And I walked up to this older lady and her name was Donna and she had name tag on. And I said, so Donna, how are you doing? She says, oh, uh, I'm, I'm here. How are you? And I said, well, if I was any better, I might be you. And she said, oh, no, no, you don't want to be me. You, you don't want to be me. In fact, I'm glad I'm old because that means I'm not going to be around that much longer. And it's, it's a really tough thing. I'm not really all that happy. And I'm like, what? OK. I said, yeah, no, it's kind of tough. I've got kids and grandkids. And she says, literally, well, I don't have any of those. And I'm glad I don't because this world is really not a great place. And I'm pretty, pretty much ready to check out. And I was like, OK, if that's the start of a conversation, for sure, we're being real here. Yeah. But I'm not going to be okay with leaving this conversation like that. So we started talking and we were talking. There wasn't anybody there. And I started telling her a little bit about what I do with my spiritual practice and what have you. And at the end, she said to me the following, which was a great opening for the next time. She said, I just want to say thank you for our conversation. I really enjoyed it. Remember me, I'm Donna almost always at cashier number three. I was like, 
okay, you just invited me to come back and make your day again. And I'm definitely going to do that, right? That authenticity thing came out. She was being very real with her pain. Love she that. She just was looking for somebody to just take a little bit away from her. Yeah. And, you know, I teach I teach this. I've been teaching this for 20 years, but still it's it's hard for me sometimes. This week, I've been reaching out to my closest friends, and I've been hesitant to do that. Like, what if they don't want to hear it? Or I haven't talked to John for, for three months. What if he's like, oh, he's, he's reaching out just because he's in trouble now. Mm -hmm. uh, now, thank God, I, you know, I've reached out to probably, probably eight different friends this week, and each of them have been very warm and inviting and even said, would you let give me an update tomorrow and let me know how you're doing or keep me posted on how this is going? And one even said, thank you for keeping me updated. I really appreciate it. I'm like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy when things get a little tricky. We've got something personal. Maybe we're upset with someone. Maybe we're upset with ourselves. Maybe we've got a desire that we don't know how to ask for or we're tolerating something. Mm -hmm. Mouse in the Room was written to give people a roadmap for when we're not sure how to move forward. We know we don't like what's going on or we want something to change, but you don't know what's happening inside. I wanted to give people a roadmap to work out, oh, this is what's going on for me. It's what I call our mice. This is what's going on for me. And here's how I could artfully name it or at least try and name it and see if the person's open to that. Yeah. And I, I have to tell you, I really love the book and I have it right here. And you can see all my notes in the side of all the questions that I wanted to ask you about the book because I found it fascinating. Maybe before we jump in, you can sort of share with everybody the premise. The, the, the basic premise is, hey, everybody talks about the elephant in the room, but hardly anybody talks about the mouse. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can Give us it in your words how that works. Yeah. So it, it came about, I mean, for 20 years, people, my coaches have been encouraging me to go and have those conversations that no one else will have. And so I've, I've had really, really difficult conversations. And sometimes it could be a conversation that could land me in prison. Sometimes it's been just, I feel really awkward and vulnerable. And and then one day someone came into a course room that I was helping to teach. And she said, you've just got to name the thing. You've got to name the thing, whatever the thing is, you've got to name the thing. And we looked at her like she's crazy. And she was a little bit. <laughs> and, and we're like, okay, use your words. What are you talking about? And she said, whatever interaction you're having, there's probably something going on. That's not being said. You have to name it. You may not have to fix it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I just got an insight for that, that person from acting class where I've been trying to fix it. Mm. And, and uh, so we, we might get to that. But she said, you've just got to name it. You may not have to do anything with it. But when you name it, the other person can go, oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, get, I get that. I've, I've been noticing that too. Or I didn't know that about you. Okay, I'm, I'm glad to know that. You got to name the thing. And I thought that was so powerful someone should write a book about it. And I suggested that she do it. And a year or two went by and she hadn't done it. And I thought, what have we got? I was going to call it name that thing. But I thought, what have we got in society closest to that? And it's the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. We know about addressing the elephant in the room. You see it. I see it. No one's saying anything. All right, that's weird. Mm -hmm. You should address the elephant in the room. And I could have called it that. But many creatures in the room are much more subtle. For example, when you said, how are you? I had a bunch of mice. It's not an elephant in the room because you don't see it, but it's a pretty big mouse for me is that I'm having a really rough week. So I, I named it. Um, with this person in acting class, she hasn't been responding to any of my texts. She hasn't been saying hello. I, I have no idea what's going on. I can make up some stuff. So it, now it's becoming a bit of an elephant. Because now, like, you know, what happens whenever I see her in class? But my mouse, if I start looking in, what's going on for me? I'm worried I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm also worried that if, if, if I did, she might badmouth me to other people and maybe other people get on the bandwagon and go, oh, yeah. 
because it's not hard for a group to get some kind of group mentality. And now all of a sudden I'm on the out and I really want to fit in mm-hmm. in this class. And if I go even deeper, I've had issues back when I was a kid where whole groups of people would say, we don't want to be your friend anymore. And that was horrendous. So it's bringing up stuff and I'm having a really rough time. These are my mice. Mm-hmm. And when I can get clear on those, and my insight talking to you today is even just in naming it, I might just, you know, I, I sent her a message today saying, I'm having a really rough time. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you're having a rough time. I don't know. But uh, I'd like to clear the air. I'd like to come back into connection. And if not, at least maybe I can just name that this is this is hard for me. Mm-hmm. Boom. Named. She yeah. either want to talk about it and we can talk about it. Or she'll decide not to, and at least I've said my side. I've said, yeah. well, I've, I've taken a shot. So I have some peace, some peace, just from having named that mouse. I've done my side. Someone, someone said uh, originally about, I think it was a month ago at the TLC retreat, the Transformational Leadership Council, I heard someone say, I did my half today. That was all she had to say. It was like I'd read a book on it. I did my half today. And what I took from that was I can't control everything. I can do my side. I can do my actions. It's up to God to do the rest. Mm-hmm. And so I, I did my half today and I actually have some peace around that. Yeah. And, and I totally get that, that, that sense of closing the loop on things that are incomplete, that make us uncomfortable and whatever it's, it's, it's yeah. 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 And I can relate to it as a husband, you know, as a husband, when, when something's not right, something's not right is not the same as an elephant. There's an, an element is I'm pissed off at you. You're pissed off at me. We both don't want to say anything. We both know that all we have to do is just knock it off. It'll be good. Yeah. That's the elephant in the room. That's the elephant. But the mouse in the room is something's not right. What's going on here? It could be just for you. Yeah. Look, if I'm late, to a call, two minutes, I might be feeling a little embarrassed. I might be wondering if the other person's annoyed, right? These are all mice. Mm -hmm. They're not elephants. So I had to write the book called Mouse in the Room. Um, When you talked about being complete, I remembered something now from Landmark from years ago that's really going to help me with this this actor. The, 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 The person being coached was saying, but it's incomplete. It's incomplete. And the coaching is always, we'll go and complete it. And like, but they won't talk to me. They're not willing to have a conversation. What do I do? And the coach said, can you be complete with the fact that it's incomplete? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think that's what I need to take on this week. Mm-hmm. I've done my half and yeah. I can be complete with, with that. And hey, there's more growth to happen, I'm sure, as yeah. you know, as as I go through this. But of I've done my side of it, and that's what I want for everybody to read the book and discover your mice, and then take that hero step of artfully naming that mouse. And sometimes you'll get magic. You'll get the magic from movies. Sometimes it'll be awkward and then you'll have the magic. Sometimes it'll be awkward and you might have to have a second second conversation because it didn't go very well. Or sometimes I told my truth, named a mouse three weeks ago with someone else from acting class and he got, there was swearing. He uh, yelled, he swore, and then he hung up on me. That's what happened. And I very nicely, so I just said, I don't want to do a scene with you. Uh, I don't want to do a scene with you because you got a lot going on in your life and you're not showing up the way I'd like people to show up. And so I'm going to pull out of this scene. I still like you, still happy to stay in relationship with you. I just don't want to do a scene and maybe that'll change in the future. Wow. That, that seemed like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But then uh, later on in class, he waved at me and he little fist bump and he'd gotten over it. And he even sent me a message saying, maybe you could help me with my anger management stuff. Mm. And so there was a real opening. Now it did blow up again. He blew up again and we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll be like, yeah, look, 
you know, kind of had a reaction or whatever. Maybe it's going to take a few goes. But just because that initial conversation doesn't seem to go well or you got uncomfortable or they got uncomfortable doesn't mean that you shouldn't have taken that hero's move, that leadership move of bringing it up Hmm. because sometimes it's magical and you find, oh, my God, it's cleared up in 30 seconds. I thought you were thinking that. No, I thought you were thinking that. Are you serious? Boom. And now everything's good because you took a risk. Yeah. So tell us, let's jump into the book a little bit because there's a lot here and I have lots of questions. I really loved it. I really did. And I want to recommend everybody at Groove. We'll obviously put the button below so people can go find the book and buy it um, for yourselves. Tell us a little bit about introducing your mice. How do you start the process of mouse naming? Yeah, thank you. Well, it starts with discovery. And I want to I want to name a mouse before then. And my desire is to let people know, you know, if $12.95 feels too much to fork out right now, the worksheet on how to do this is a free download. Mm. And it's called the 3D process or a 3D worksheet, or sometimes mouse naming in 3D. And it'll run you through what I'm about to share with, with Ridgely. And you can print off 20 copies. Just go to mouseintheroom.com. And top left, it's not obvious, but top left, there's a link for you to download it. Print off a few copies. And anytime you got something like this, the worksheet will guide you through it. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll I'll put all those instructions as well. So people. Wonderful. Wonderful. So firstly, it starts with discovery. What are your mice? What's going on? Now, the, the clue will be you feel upset with someone or there's something you want or you're frustrated or maybe you're complaining. You got a complaint. Right? Oh, this someone, so and so did this, I don't like it, whatever. These are the clues. So then you get your worksheet out. And the first thing it's going to ask you the 3D process the D's stand for discover your mice, decide if it's a mouse worth naming, and then disarm the other person so that they're actually in a good space and willing to receive your mice. So let's start with discover. If you know you've got an issue, so I'll, I'll take this at uh, this one that's been really alive for me. Someone just stopped responding to texts and is just ghosting me. And uh, so I, I don't like that. I don't know what to do with it, but what are my mice? So we go through the worksheet. What's going on for me? What am I feeling? Well, I'm feeling a bit hurt. Mm-hmm. I'm d- doubting myself. Like, this is a really nice person. She's a really nice person. If she doesn't want to be friends with me, and I don't know if that's true, we call that a storytelling mouse, right? It's like, maybe she doesn't want to be friends with me. If if someone so nice doesn't want to be friends with me, what does that mean about me? <laughs> like, ouch. And so I'm, I'm doubting myself. Um, I'm wondering if I did something wrong. It's something I could apologize for. Um I know that this that she's in a relationship with someone else. Maybe she thought that I'm not okay with that and I want more than friendship, right? Another storytelling mouse. But you get all these down on paper so that they're not running around in your subconscious. Mm-hmm. Um, I also realize I have a desire mouse. I'd like things to be good and easy between us so I can say, hi, how you doing? And also I thought I'd found a good friend in class and I'm – kind of worried that I might not have that anymore. So that's another desire that I'd like to have a friendship with this person. This is gold to get clear. If you've got a therapist, this is the kind of thing a therapist will help you get clear on. If you've got a coach, a coach might be able to draw it out so you can get clear. Discovering your your mice is a win, whether or not you decide to go and name them. So I encourage you to print off the worksheet and anytime you've got an issue with someone, at least work out what's going on with you. Yeah, well, good. Well, one of the things that I liked in the book is where where you stated, don't kill your mice, befriend them. Yeah. So maybe you could tell us exactly what you mean by that. Yeah. So let's suppose I'm 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 thinking, I'm doubting myself. I could think that that's bad and wrong to doubt myself. And and David, you know, th- that's bad. I want to kill that mouse. So I'm not doubting myself. That doesn't seem to work. 
or maybe you've got a desire to um, be a famous singer and you think, oh, that's, that's stupid. That's never, that's never really going to work. It's not practical. I shouldn't have that desire. Or I have a desire to be with someone and they're married, right? And we want to kill these mice and not have these feelings. Well, I just find it doesn't work. They don't seem to go away. They seem to maybe get stronger. So let's practice some kindness and some compassion and welcome our mice, befriend them. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to do that in this situation. Um, okay, get in touch with that vulnerable part of me that doubts myself, that, that part that when I was a kid and some kids are like, we don't want to be friends with you. Ouch. Mm-hmm. I, want to, I want to welcome that part in, maybe have some tears and let it play its course. Let's befriend our mice. The more we can befriend them and handle, deal with them, even with just ourselves, the less power they have. Yeah. Then if we can, from that foundation, then go and artfully name that mouse with someone else, which we'll get to, they have even less power. Right. You know, I've, I've said to, uh, I'm a single man looking for a relationship, a long-term partner. I've said to a woman, I just want a name. I think you're awesome. I wish you were single. If you were single, I'd be asking you out. Uh, but you have a, a relationship. I honor that and I respect that. And I just wanted to name it. Because if I didn't name it, you might be like, wow, this guy's enjoying me a lot. And it's like, it's true. I am. I just named a mouse with, um, with someone recently. We're having a Zoom call. And I said, look, if we're in the same city, I'd be asking you out. And she said, look, I got to tell you, I don't think we'd work at all because we're chalk and cheese. And I said, yeah, that wouldn't stop me. And then she said, well, there's an age gap. And you whatever said, you know, that's a totally valid point. And at the end of the call, I said, here's a plan. I fly to your city. We get you pregnant because she wants to have kids. And then when the age gaps get, when I get to 70, you trade me in for a younger model. (laughs) <laughs> right but but i was having fun with it i totally heard her mice and respect it and she's right you know there's a big age gap but just in naming it mm-hmm. you got to come into connection around it and i got to play with it and it didn't have to be this hidden thing like god i really really like you like just when i have a zoom call with her and i look at her i'm like i said you're so beautiful and your background is so beautiful i'm just it's made my day just with that, you don't have to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Naming mice can bring us into connection. Let's not kill them. Mm-hmm. Let's friend them. And you also don't have to name every mouse. That's where the second D comes in. You mm-hmm. might just name it for yourself and we call it a mirror mouse. And all mice, by the way, here's a hot tip, all mice are mirror mice. Some of them are desire mice as well, toleration mice, storytelling mice, but all of them are mirror mice because it tells us something about ourself. Mm-hmm. If you're willing to go to the next step and work out if it's a mouse worth naming and you decide to name it, and then you decide to have the courage to go with your worksheet to the person and say, hey, can we have a conversation about it? That's a hero's move. Mm-hmm. I did it today. I, I gave her like a few days of space and then I reached out and I said, could we talk for two minutes? Mm-hmm. And I sent yeah. an audio saying, here's why I'd like to talk. And uh, that was a hero's move. That was hard. Mm-hmm. That was risky because I, I tried a few days ago and nothing. I try one more time. I've done my half. Exactly. Right? We, can't, we can't control what the other person does, but we can control taking a shot at it. You know, one of the things that I found fascinating also from the book is, you know, you got the elephant in the room, then you've got the mouse in the room, and then every now and then you have a rouse, a rodent of unusual size, right? Yeah. Instead of a regular mouse, it's a yeah. rouse, a rodent of unusual size. I thought that was great. Can you kind of distinguish between a regular mouse and a rouse? Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason I came up with the mouse is because I thought it's so small, it's so innocuous. And sometimes you really got to look because they're very subtle. You won't even notice it yourself. You just notice something's off or someone did something 
And later on, you, you don't like that person and you have to go back. So they're quite small and subtle. But we wanted to make the point in the book that a mouse could be huge as well. Like this mouse for me, I, I was up in the night two nights ago thinking about this and, and, and struggling with it, that someone so nice would not talk to me. I wish I wasn't so sensitive, but I am. That's a rodent of unusual size. Um, there was one for me. I don't, I don't go into the details because I realize that there's also a space for privacy at times and it involves someone else. But I did something when I was younger that was wrong. And as I got older, I realized this it weighed on me. And, and, uh, and also it was against the law. And if I went and confessed, I could be prosecuted. Well, that was a rodent of unusual size. It wasn't an elephant because I don't even know if the other person knew that it was me or if it was even an issue for them. But for me, that was a huge mouse. So we brought in the Princess Bride reference for Princess Bride fans of a rodent of unusual size to point out that it might be a very small thing still possibly worth naming or for you it could be a huge could be the size of an elephant but we still call it a mouse because the other person may not be aware of it so it's a mouse and it's yours and therefore it's your responsibility to name mm -hmm. no one else can name that mouse for you they may not even know that you're unhappy with how that meeting's going they might not even know that you're unhappy with your pay rate they like how could they have any idea unless you take the courage to name a mouse? I loved also the way you kind of broke down the do's and the don'ts of the process of disarming, right? The don't blame the other person, don't name your mouse impulsively because that's not ever going to get it clarity for it. Don't wait forever, right? Don't be waiting to name yeah. the mouse if they try to disarm something you can't be letting it fester because one of the things you also said that i thought was brilliant was yes you can name the elephant and deal with the elephant but if you don't deal with the mouse if you're not careful it can turn into an infestation yeah they breed they breed and then they resent so because i'm in acting class a lot of examples from acting come up for me i had one guy who said he'd be ready uh and he'd have his lines memorized for our rehearsal on Wednesday. Didn't happen. He wasn't ready. He's like, oh, but I'll be ready by Friday. I got a lot going. I'll be ready Friday. Friday rehearsal. Wasn't ready. He said, I'll definitely be ready tomorrow morning. Don't worry. I'll have it. Wasn't ready. Sunday night. Not ready. We're going to perform this thing in a theater on Monday. And it's like, you know, I didn't name my frustration. I knew, I knew he had a lot going on. So it built up for me. And it became a thing. And then we got through the scene and it went pretty well, but I don't like to be seat of the pants for it. Uh, and then some other things started hap happening for our next scene. And finally, I, I said, look, will you definitely book, book something for us by tomorrow, by the end of tomorrow and text me so that I know it's done and I can tick it off? Will you definitely do that? He said, yes, I will definitely do that. This is my third request by the way, he didn't do it. If you don't name these things, like I could have said, look, I noticed I'm, get, I'm getting a little frustrated. Uh, I've been leaving it in your court. Do you want me to do it or will you do it? I need certainty. If mm -hmm. I can't have some certainty, I'd rather not do the scene and I might need to bow out. I could have said that originally and I did not do that. Mm -hmm. So he's just going along thinking I can keep doing what I've always done. And he didn't, he didn't do what he promised he'd do. So I called him and I said, look, I'm going to bow out of the scene. And it came as a huge surprise and shock to him. Mm -hmm. To me, but I was starting to have an infestation and thank God I said something then, because if I didn't, I would have kept, I would have resented him. And I called him and I said, I don't want to resent you. I think the, the friendship's more important than any scene. So I'm going to ask that you recast me and, uh, and bowed out. But had I let him know as things were going, look, feeling a little frustrated, see what you can do. Hopefully you'll be, you'll be ready or whatever, but just letting you know. And if it keeps going this way, I might need to pull out. I'm not there yet, but I want to give you a heads up. So it's not a shock. I could have done that. 
that's where I could take responsibility. And in fact, if I do speak to him again about this, and I'm not sure I will because he asked me not to communicate with him, um, I might say that's what I can be responsible for, that I could have let you know along the way as the frustration was building up, and I could have let you know I'm going to pull out if it keeps going this way, and I didn't let you, I didn't say that. Mm-hmm. And so it was a surprise to you. And in fact, having seen that now, right now, what I can take responsibility for, I can see that I might be willing to do another scene with him as long as it's very clear what my expectations are and knowing that if they are not met, then I am going to pull out. Now, that also could be a setup for disaster because to set up something like that with someone who's very likely to not fulfill on the, you know, I don't want to set anyone up for failure. Sure. I'm now seeing where I can take responsibility. And that's one of the benefits of filling in the 3D worksheet is you can often see there's one question. What might it be like to be in the other person's shoes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to like start to consider that. Oh, wow. From their point of view, there's no big deal here. There's nothing, you know, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. You know what, mate? I think we need to continue this conversation. What do you think? I'm not feeling complete here. You've got a call. What if we pick it up in a couple of days and spend another 30 minutes on this? What do you think? I would like to. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we'll do do it in two stages. Um, in fact, if you like, my call is going to be 30 minutes. If you're free, we could do we could continue this then and we could do another 20 minutes or so. Um, well, let me let me wrap this up with everybody. Just let them know. OK, yeah. Groovesters, Groove Stars, what we're going to do is we're going to pick this right back up again uh, and get part two. And so you can really find out how to take care of your mice. And get the mouse in the room and sort it out. So we'll be back at you very shortly. All right. Ciao for now. All right. Here we go. And it is part two with David Wood, the author of Mouse in the Room with the groovy new nature background there. You got the stream going behind you, David. What up with that? That's right. Well, I want to be more in nature. I moved from Boulder, Colorado to L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't do it for the nature. I did it for acting. And I'm in an apartment complex and I'm missing the, you know, the leafy scenery. So I often have it for yourself. Yeah. I often have a waterfall uh, background sound over uh, on a speaker and I bought some plants. And now whenever I can, I like this creek setting because I can imagine sitting by the water. Ah, And then life is good. Perfect. Well, let's jump right back in where we picked off. And we were talking about mouse naming. And I love this because I think this happens all the time. This is an advanced mouse naming tip. Facts before feelings why is it so important to get your facts before feelings which is something that a lot of people don't even have any clue about Mm. love that question well when i come to you see we've all got our own stories i got my interpretation of events you've got your interpretation of events and if i let's let's say i don't know let's say uh we'll take a workplace setting and you're late you've been late a couple of times to meetings if I go in, I just start launching in about my frustration. We might not have any common ground, any any agreement on, on anything. And if I say something like, you know, you're constantly late. Well, you might think that's not true. I'm on time a lot. I was late twice. Mm-hmm. So now already we've got something to argue about. Mm-hmm. So there's a very clever way of speaking and this could change your life listeners, uh, which is speaking inarguably. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a, it takes a, it's a discipline because you go into story and assumption and this and that, whatever, um, you know, say your wife says, Oh, you never, you never clean up after yourself. That's not true. Cause it's not true. Right. But if you speak inarguably, you can speak about what we can agree on. So what are the facts? And so it might be, Hey, 
I noticed that uh, you were a couple of minutes late to the last meeting and it's happened before. Um, does that sound right? You know, can we at least just agree on what happened? And in landmark education, they would say that is what so. Mm -hmm. That's what so. That's what we've got reality on. And then speak about your feelings and your experience. So when you were late, we've already agreed on that. I felt disrespected. I started to feel concerned that if you're late, maybe other people might think, oh, well, I can be late and it doesn't really matter. And there'll be like a loss of energy, a loss of power. And I would love it if you would be on time. In fact, as a model for everyone else, if you'd be say five minutes early would be awesome. You notice how I haven't said anything that can be disputed. It's That's my, right. even, even when I said I got concerned about the possibility of X, I didn't say everyone's going to be disempowered if you're late. It's all my story. So facts before feelings, let's agree on what happened. When you did X, I felt Y is a very simple formula for making sure that you've got the fact right that's inarguable and then your feeling, which is also inarguable. No one can argue with that. They might have an issue with it, like you shouldn't feel like that. Really? Well, maybe I shouldn't, and yet I do. Right. I, right. I had, a, had an argument with a guy we talked about before we hit record. He said, I guess you're probably annoyed. And I said, yeah. And then he went, why? It was like he was two different people. Yeah. He's like, why? And I told him why. And he started defending himself. I'm like, dude, you asked me about my feelings and I have a right to feel whatever I want to feel. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's facts before feelings. No, and I love that because I think so many people do that, especially in relationship with somebody that you really care about, like like a, a brother, a, si a sibling, a spouse, sometimes a kid. You might say something like, you always leave the light on to your child. Yeah. Well, you know that's not true. Right. They might leave the light on 90% of the time, but it's not always. And yet we tend to do that or... I can't believe you never clean up after the toothpaste or what we do this kind of thing, as opposed to stating, as you said, what so. So agreement can be the basis of dialogue and discussion, as opposed to literally you're setting somebody off ahead of time before you even get going. Yeah. Yeah. So at least if we can agree on what happened, then we've got some common ground to start talking about how we feel about it. And yeah. you, ideally, you'll get consent. Can I tell you, you know, what came up for me when that happened? And if the person says yes, they have just put themselves in a listening position. Mm -hmm. They may not stay there for more than a few seconds, but they have put themselves in that position, which is the, the third D in the 3D process is to disarm mm -hmm. somebody. And this is all a way to disarm them. You hit, hit, handle the facts. Is it okay uh, get consent, and then okay, here's how it how how it was for me, and then as a pro tip, this is advanced. Check in with them as to how it felt for them. Mm -hmm. How how was it for you to to be late, or how is it for you to hear this? You know, do you feel uh, defensive or inspired or annoyed or something in between? I like to give a menu. I think we've just covered six different distinctions in the past three minutes. I'll, I'll pause for breath. <laughs> well, one thing that I found really fascinating from the book was the idea that children are often experts at mouse naming. Yeah. Now, can you say a bit about that? Because that's really, you know, we're adults and we think we know everything. And then you drop that on me. I'm like, hmm, kids are mouse naming champions. Hmm. Yeah. How is that? Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, they don't have the filters. They don't have the filters and all the societal stuff. So they're much more likely to just say what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, my foot hurts. Rather than we might think, oh, no one wants to hear about my foot. So we wouldn't say it. I um, have a wonderful friend whose child has Down syndrome and very, very intelligent in many ways, her child, in, in many ways that we are not. And she said to me when she found out that my sister died, she said, how did she die? 
Mm -hmm. Most people would never ask that question. And her mother was concerned about how that would land on me. And I said, it just felt really honest. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm willing to tell you. So, so I did. So kids are mouse naming champions. They'll tell us how they're feeling. They'll tell us uh, often when they're upset, we tend to squash that. Mm -hmm. Like when I was a kid, if I was upset, I didn't hear, oh, say more about that. What are you upset about? Where do you feel that in your body? Oh, you're angry? Yeah, I can see why you'd be angry. I think I'd be angry too if, if I was told we're going to the zoo and now we're not going to the zoo. Do you want to beat a pillow? Or do you want to yell for a little bit? Like never had that. I just found out it was a bad idea to get, you know, if I was crying, I might get in trouble. If I was angry, I might get in trouble. So we could watch our kids and go, oh, maybe I can, maybe I could go up to my boss. You wouldn't do it in the same way. Mm -hmm. right you're not going to blurt it out how'd your sister die or i'm really sad right now i'm really angry you use the 3d process right we can we can we can be artful about it so the book is not about blurting it's right. not although i will say originally if people went from hiding everything to blurting it would still be an upgrade mm -hmm. because we just have to deal with it people you know it may not go well uh, the first time, but then eventually it'll it'll probably resolve itself and you'll work it out eventually. Better than hiding. Right. Nine times out of ten. But the book is about artfully naming that mouse so that you don't have to be so afraid of those edgy conversations and might even start ideally leaning into them and saying, you know what? I've got the tools here. I'm going to be... One guy wrote to me and said, thank you so much for your podcast interview. I'm using the model and I am batting four for four. I've had four tough conversations using this model and each one has gone really well. I'm like, you go champion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and, and uh, you know, we know from Richard Branson's probably most famous saying about success is your degree of success is inversely proportionate to how many difficult conversations you're willing to have. And I love that. It's like he's saying, hey, become a master at having the tough conversations and you'll get ahead a lot quicker than everybody else. I think you mean that without the word inversely, if I'm right. right. You're it's right. It's directly proportional to the number, yeah. number of tough conversations we'll have. I think that's true. Look, at the end of your life, do you want to say, I'm so glad I played it very carefully? And, and didn't speak up and didn't name my truth. Mm -hmm. There are times when it could get you in trouble. And you know, we were talking before I hit record, I was trying to reach out to a couple of people and say, what's wrong? Is, and I was doing it as artfully as I knew how. Can, can I apologize for something? What, even that got me in trouble. Mm -hmm. Someone had to call me and say, don't do that. You know? And I was like, Wow. Well, okay. can we talk about that for a second? Because Dave, yeah. we've been friends a long time, mate. And, and I think this is a big thing. It seems as though in our society today, people are, and I don't know whether it has to do with the pandemic and being locked up and isolated and we don't have enough chance, time to practice the art of dialogue or whatever, but it seems like people are more uncomfortable than ever with having uncomfortable conversations which actually get people more to the real whatever is going on, to the source, to the core of what's going on. Why do you think that is, that there's been a seeming decrease in people's willingness and especially desire to have the tough conversations? I'll tell you what comes up for me, and I don't know if this is true in any way, shape or form. What comes up for me is, let's use Me Too as an example. I think Me Too is a very important movement that had to happen for our society because marginalized voices need a megaphone. So, you know, we still have marginalized populations that don't really have a voice, like prisoners, for example. There's not a lot of lobby groups that are like advocating for the for the rights of prisoners and hey, you can't you can't say something negative about an inmate, uh, or even that term inmate. Um, but women are getting more of a voice 
people of colour are getting more of a voice, people who have different sexual orientations or gender orientations are getting more of a voice. And I think that's a good thing. It has to happen. I think what's also happening is we might be going, in some cases, over the top and too far as we try and care for those marginalised communities. And even that may be necessary. Mm. I heard that Vic Baronco, who started an organisation called the Moore House, he said, when you fold a piece of paper over, there's a crease in it. When you try to bring it back to flat, it's never, ever going to be flat unless you fold it the other way for a bit. Mm -hmm. So maybe we're doing that in being extra careful in um, taking care of these marginalised voices. The sad thing is that if someone does make a mistake, they can be jumped on um, very heavily and stomped on. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as an example, I've got a, a friend who um, teaches consent and someone came out and gave an interview to something called the Daily Beast saying that eight years ago um, she felt pressured into doing something sexual with him. Uh, and, uh, and, and she, she was in the sex industry. She was actually a, a porn star. And it was kind of a classic, like not classic, but a very strange situation that a porn star is saying she felt pressured into doing something sexual. And I assume he knew nothing about it for eight years. And then people jumped on him. And by people, I mean people who probably never met him on the internet just went nuts and crucified him. And I was sad to see it. I'm like, because I know him and I know that he cares so much about learning. And I felt that the, the diving on him and the stomping on him was doing more of a divide between the genders than saying, okay, he did something wrong, perhaps. He can do better. Let's teach him. Let's show him. That's what I would prefer. But hey, I, I'm a, I'm a guy. I'm a, I'm a white man with money, mm -hmm. so I am um, probably the least qualified person to speak about marginalized voices. That's why I just said I'll tell you what came up for me. But I have no idea if any of it is true. Um, you know, before we hit record, I had a had something happen this last week that was very painful for me. I had tried to resolve an issue with two women in my acting class because I could see something was wrong. I felt like something's off. And I thought, I wonder if I've done something. And I hate the idea that I might have done something wrong. So I reached out a couple of times with each person to say, did I say something wrong? Is there something I can apologize for? Apparently that was not well received and that was not the right move. I didn't know that. And so I am trying to learn um, how to be better and how to be more sensitive. But I don't want, I'm, I'm so wary about even sharing that story because that's like advanced calculus that I'm trying to learn about. For most people in most situations, I don't want you to think, oh, I should not reach out to resolve something. That would make me sad. Mm -hmm. The idea that now in this class, if there's an issue with a woman, not a man, but with a woman, I the best move for me might be to not reach out at all and just say to the teacher, there might be an issue over to you, over to you. That's not how I would want to run something. I, I'd rather encourage people to use their words, but that's the situation I'm in. If you've got a tricky HR situation at work uh, where you say you got one strike against you or if the person has responded with silence, this is, and this is what I'm learning now, that might mean I do not want to communicate. Mm -hmm. And so you can either take that as, okay, I'm going to just leave it. Or if you were in a movie, you wouldn't leave it, would you? You'd never leave it in a movie or in a dream. You would try and say, hey, can I resolve this? What can I do? Maybe you'll send a a charming letter or maybe you send a gift or maybe you'll ask a friend to mediate, you know, because you want to resolve for harmony. That's more of the direction I would encourage people to go in because too many of us say, 
No, it's going to be awkward. There are going to be feelings. Oh, my God. Oh, this is so good, Ridgely, because I'm listening to myself and I'm realizing I'm quite pleased with how I, how I acted and how I reached out. I've now gotten the communication. Don't do that. Okay. But until you get that communication, be a leader. Strive for kindness and compassion and to resolve your tough conversations and your issues with communication rather than keeping it to yourself. I think that's a sad way to live. I don't want to live in that world. I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. So switching gears for a second, I loved the part about relationship super mice and appreciation mice and curiosity mice. And so I wonder if you could speak a little bit about relationship super mice and why these can be so positive for us in our relationships. Wow. I don't actually remember. The, I remember putting super mice in the book and I don't remember what the super mouse was. Um, can you give me a little more context? Do you have it right? Now? Yeah, 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 right sure. Now. No, I, I think it's, it's about what are the extra mice in relationships that have the big impact, which is why you call oh. it. And the two that you mention as being the big ones are appreciation mice. Right. And curiosity mice. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. So it was fun when we started writing the book and someone someone asked me, what are the different categories of, of mice? And we didn't have any. We were just like, you should share your experience. You should share your feelings. You should share um, thoughts if they're getting in between you and someone else. You should share your body sensations if they're relevant and they're present right now that's the book but he said what are the categories and as we went through we identified different categories to help people start to bring out of themselves and identify what their mice are so if you're listening to this and you wonder what your mice are get a piece of paper and write at the top appreciation mice and then just list what you appreciate about the people in your life boom we we're not, whatever level you're at in terms of appreciating people, imagine what your life would be like and for the people around you if you appreciated people three to five times more than you do now. Mm -hmm. Your kids, three to five times more than you do now. Hey, you know one thing I love about you? This. You know one thing that, that made me smile about you? This. In fact, I might do it. I got a friend who's really having a rough day today. I might send an appreciation mouse because right okay. now I bet she can't find any for herself. So these are wonderful in any relationship with your staff, with your boss, with your coworkers. Hey, I just love it how you do this. I notice how you did that. Um, I was in acting class on Wednesday night and one of the students said to the teacher, I do have a question, but before I do that, I want to say what a beautiful note you just gave us all. And the note was something like, we are in heartbreak territory here. That's where it was. She was giving me feedback. She's like, you, this is heartbreak territory. And we didn't see that. And he said, what a beautiful note you just gave. There's an appreciation mouse. And he had to take a risk to do that because no one does that in class so i might even reach out to him and say dude good for you you are a leader in that classroom because he's willing to take up a little space and to name his appreciation mice so valuable in relationship now the other super mouse for relationship is curiosity yeah let me let me quote you on this because th this is a great little thing i wanted to quote from your book it says this we often think of curiosity as a feeling and therefore out of our control. It is actually a practice of choosing to wonder about other people. And in the words of Valerie Carr, wonder is the wellspring of love. I thought that was great. Wonder is the wellspring wow. of love. This is deep. So as kids, it may be a feeling. It's a naturally arising thing. Oh, what's that? Why does that happen? Why are you sad? How did your sister die? Right? 
as adults, I'll speak for myself, I lost a lot of that. I go to a party. I'm not naturally curious about maybe everybody there. Mm-hmm. Every single person I'm not curious about. I'm just, you know, until they get on my radar, they say something or I spot something. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. What's going on there? What kind of mind have we got here? Then I start getting cute. Last, last night I was on this um, game server playing a game and it's always completely anonymous, completely anonymous. And this guy wrote to me as we we're playing this card game online and he could be from any country. And he said, oh, you're a coach too. I'm like, yeah, how'd you know? He looked up my handle and, and it managed to find a website of mine because I wasn't private about my handle. And I'm like, yeah. Anyway, I looked him up and I'm like, this guy's a legit coach for high performers. What are the odds? And then I went and looked him up on Facebook. We have like six dear friends in common and I'm talking with him after you. today. Nice. So, so the curiosity started to come, but that was circumstantial. It just, it's rare that it happens. And that's why we wrote in the book that it's a practice at our age. Mm. It's something you can do as a discipline. Now, here's an exercise I highly encourage you to do with your kids, with your partner, on a date. Uh, In fact, I'm taking this on because I'm listening as I speak. There's someone I want to ask out, and I think we could play. I could play this game with her. It's called the curiosity game. And here's how it goes. You set a timer. And one person will just sit until there's a question that comes up. they like, what do I want to know about this person? Don't plan it because that's not curiosity. In the moment, you got five minutes. You might sit there for a minute until you and just look at the person and see what comes up. Now, I hated this because I didn't think I had access to curiosity. And I was like, oh, I won't ask the right questions. Or what if I'm not curious about the person? This is going to be horrible. But you know what? Something would pop into my head just looking at them. Something would pop in like, what lights you up? Or when were you sad recently? Or is there a secret dream you have? It just came out in the moment and they they loved it. Mm -hmm. They loved it. In fact, I did this with with Shana List, who helped me write the book, we played the curiosity game. We never did it while we wrote the book, but we did it last week. And I started asking questions. And one of my questions is, what would you like to be asked right now? And she said, no, I want your curiosity. (laughs) How ninja was that? Uh She wanted me to ask what I wanted to know. So I said, okay, give me a second. And then I asked out of curiosity and she loved receiving the question. And then she spoke and it was, so. and the five minutes can go like that. Yeah, sure. And it's such an animated conversation. And once you have this tool, you can be at a bus stop and say, I've, I, I was sitting at a restaurant years ago in Bali. This woman sat next to me. She said, do you mind if I share a table? I didn't know until three weeks later that she just wanted to get to know me. Um, and I ignored her for 40 minutes while I worked on my laptop. And then I, something in me said, David, there's a nice woman sitting at this table. Maybe you should connect with her. So I closed the laptop and I said to her, I have questions for you, but I don't know what they are yet. <laughs> That's the doorway into curiosity. And then I said, let's see. And I just, whatever came up and we started going back and forth and uh, we ended up being in a relationship for a while. Nice. Really? Nice. I have a question for you, but I don't know what they are yet. I love that. That's yeah. Great. Which is a nice way. It's an artful way of saying, I, I want to get curious about you, which might be weird for people to hear. Right. I want to get curious about it. They don't, they don't have any frame of reference because mm-hmm. who's giving the gift of curiosity? Mm-hmm. Nobody. Mm-hmm. except for you because you listen to this podcast and you could go you whenever you go to a checkout at the supermarket 
just look at the person on the other side of the counter and you might say, I got a question for you, but I'm not sure what it is just yet. That'll get their attention. Yeah. <laughs> and that gives you a moment to just see what comes up. And I, I sometimes ask, what was your favorite moment of today? But that's a pre-planned question. You could yeah. just wait and see what comes up. I love that. I'm definitely going to do that. I'm definitely doing that. That's, I got a question for you, but I'm not sure what it is yet. That is so good. And it's real and it's genuine. And I love that. Those right. are your curiosity mice right there. Yeah. Super yeah. mice in relationship. So I got one last topic to cover. And I know we're probably running way over an hour or whatever, but I think this is a big one. And, and this is the receiving other people's mice, receiving another's mouse. And in the book you talk about, it is often the mice that seem negative at first that actually offer us the greatest opportunities. So if we can go against our instincts to defend, shut down or run away and actually turn toward the threat with a genuine sense of curiosity, we have the power to transform this energy into more trust, understanding, and intimacy. Can you speak a little bit about that? Oh, this is this is quite personal for me um, because, as you know, I recently got feedback that was very, very hard for me, like devastating. I felt crushed. Um, I felt crushed, and it did not come in the package I wanted. And I had the chance to be on the call with a guru last week, a real spiritual leader. And I raised this question. I said, I'm just devastated by, by hearing that two women felt uncomfortable with me and didn't feel safe enough to tell me that, but, but went to someone else to, to, to tell me. And it came in a very harsh package. And he said, yeah, so it didn't come in the package you wanted. I said, no. And he said, if it did come in the package you wanted, it wouldn't be as valuable. In fact, he said the opposite is true. If it came in a package you wanted, it would bolster your ego. It comes in the package you don't want, then there's a chance for something else. And he, I, look, it's hard to say it, but he was right because I was so crushed and devastated. I was crying and I, you know, I was worried about ostracism from my community. I was worried about uh, cancel culture and, you know, post me to people stomping on me with their boots. Because um, in because in in today's society, if you make a woman uncomfortable, um, you could be in some trouble. Sure. And, and I have no comment in this moment as to whether that's right or wrong. It's just that it seems to be the, the way. So can you receive another person's experience let's say they're upset with you let's say they say hey i'm pissed and we need to talk that's not a package most of us want to hear feedback in right that's not easy so this is advanced stuff we're talking about you don't have you don't have to read the book and you don't have to do this you don't have to receive someone's mouse if it comes in a package you don't want you could say hey that's too much for me hey i'm feeling triggered hey i need you to stop yelling you can totally do that and set your boundaries. And if you're able to say, all right, I'm going to take a breath. Tell me what you've got. If you can do that, then you might give them an experience that surprises them. <laughs> you may give them a healing experience. Um, those two women who didn't want to resolve something with me I imagine have no idea that they were in communication with someone who would probably listen to them and hear it and even apologize because they're in society and society doesn't do that. So we're talking about advanced stuff. I had a client recently shared something with me that wasn't easy for me to hear. He said, look, I'm going to go out on a limb here and name a mouse. I got the sense when we got on the call that last week that you hadn't read my form and that you hadn't prepared and you didn't know what I was talking about. And I felt the sting of it. And then my reaction was, 
oh my God, I'm so glad you said that because keeping it secret is not going to help anybody. So thank you for telling me. And then I realized, I said to him, you know, this is a huge contribution to me because my I've been saying I'm going to read all the forms before I get on the call. I don't always do it. So you're, you are holding me accountable and I recommit to doing that. And right here in this moment, I tell you, I will read every form. And if I haven't, I will acknowledge it at the top of the hour, at the beginning of the call and we'll handle it and we'll deal with it. I might give you extra time. I might ask for five minutes to, to read it right there and then. I don't know what I'll do, but at least that will happen. And he said, I never imagined I would get a reaction like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying this to pat myself on the back, even though I do like to do that. And that's an important practice. I'm saying this as an example for if you hear something difficult and you can come and, and maybe take time with it and digest it and see what you can learn from it and go back to the person uh, and there's a little pr practice in the book, and I can go through the three or four steps, if you like. Um, I can just name them. Um, you will surprise and sometimes amaze people. So the steps are very simple. Firstly, breathe. You've got to catch it. You've got to notice what's happening. Oh, I'm having a reaction. This person's coming at me with something. And um, secondly, listen. And then check with them, say, hey, I want to check I've got this right. It sounds like this is what's going on for you. It's called reflection. Reflect it and then ask, is there more? And then when they say, no, that's everything, then you might say, okay, could I tell you what's coming up for me as I hear this? i got some, some feelings and thoughts. That's, that's laid out in the book. This is an advanced practice. Mm -hmm. it's not for everybody. It's not easy to do. And sometimes I don't do it in the moment and I come back later. So for example, with the teacher who called me and said, there've been a couple of complaints. It was so hard for me. Like I was having a, a, a physical reaction. Once I had time and got coaching on it, I was then able to go back and say, thank you for the feedback. That was very difficult to hear but I do want to grow and get better as a man and as an actor. Um, so if you spot anything else I can ever do to be different and, and have people feel more comfortable around me, don't hesitate to pull me aside. Now I didn't get there on my own. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. That took a village mm -hmm. to help me work my way through that, to realize the truth that I really do want to get better. And I really do want to, but I had to get through those layers of defense. Again, this is ninja advanced stuff. I don't expect anyone to do this. Um, the book is, is, is aimed at much more mainstream about you've got an issue. You're not sure how to name it. You want things to go better. And there's a simple 3d process for, do, for doing it. I don't want people to listen to this and go, Oh, this is, this is, this is, this is too hard. No, this is Ridgely's, Ridgely's diving into the advanced chapter in the book. And I'm glad we are, but you don't have to go there. You can start with the easiest stuff. Well, I can say on behalf of the community, this has been such a great two-part session that we've had. And I want to just remind everybody of what they can do. Everybody knows, look at the button down below go check out the book, but tell them a little bit one more time about the tool that you also make available to everybody very graciously. So at my recommendation, I got the book. I love the book. It's great. Really enjoyed it. Got a lot out of it. Recommend that you get it. And there's also a tool that you've made available to everybody for free. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for plugging the book. You know, I spent two years on it. So it's lovely to hear someone else say, this is great. Read it. And, I, and I'll add to that plug. It's great. Um, for your personal relationships. It was deliberately written for you to use at home and at work. So you want to be a better leader. You want to have less conflict. You want to be uh, able to influence people. It's really great for that. So there's my work plug. The, um, the download is free. The download is a worksheet that I created because it's one thing to give you a book 
telling you how to do this stuff, but what happens when you have an issue with your partner or your boss or your coworker or a client and you're like, how do I, how do I distill this into a conversation? Print off the worksheet. It's a one pager and it'll ask you some questions. You fill them in, you get clarity, you work out uh, a roadmap and then you can take that with you and say, I wrote some notes. I, you know, I wanted to do a good job of this. So I wrote some notes in case I forget so, something. And there's your roadmap right there. It's called the 3D worksheet or mouse naming, mouse naming in 3D. And you can get that at mouseintheroom.com. Yeah. And uh, I think that's so, you know, what, what occurred to me when you were sharing and explaining that, David, was it's actually very honoring to someone to show up saying, hey, this is important enough that I wrote some notes about it. I mean, if somebody came to me with something, they've got some notes and said, yeah, I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. So I took a couple of notes. I'd be like, wow, this is pretty important. It, it elevates the level of the dialogue right away before it even starts. Yeah, yeah. Because because these this territory is not easy. And this is why most people, why we avoid this for, for, for most of our lives. We're like, no, let's not do that. But when you've got the clarity oh, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I want. This is what I'm scared of. That's gold. Even if you decide not to name the mouse, get clear for yourself. And then there's a little section to help you decide right on that sheet, whether you're going to name it or not. And if you are, it'll show you how to go and disarm the person so that they're ready. And you'll have that roadmap. Oh my God, it can make such a difference. It's much less likely to be a train wreck. Ridgely, when you've got the roadmap, I can't guarantee it. They might still get upset and get defensive. But if you go in with that worksheet, you've got such a, a better chance of it, of it ending up in a happy place. Um, so go to mouseintheroom.com and look up in the top left. It's not obvious, mm -hmm. uh, but top left, 3D worksheet, free download. If you like the worksheet and you want... Um, more information on how to navigate this territory then get the book it's 12.95 i think on amazon uh it's also a wonderful gift if you've got people around you that you'd like to be more open with you yeah. want your family to be more open you want your kids to be more open with you you want your staff to be more open with you you want to shift the culture have everybody read the book together and then you'll be you'll have a new language hey can i name a mouse with you oh yeah what what, what what you got? I, I got a curiosity mouse or I got a, I got a toleration mouse. Is that okay? Oh yeah. They know exactly where you're coming from. You got the shared language. I'm waiting for the first person to say, to write to me and say, I got this for my whole team. I do have a, a, um, a coach who's buying it for all of her clients as uh, Christmas gifts, mm -hmm. but I haven't yet had someone say, I got it for my whole team. And now we are mouse naming left, right, and center. Listeners, I hope one of you is going to be that first person to reach out to me. In fact, I'm going to give you my email address. Um, David at mouseintheroom.com. You know, that's a pretty easy one to remember since it's also the title of the book. Yeah, Mouse in the Room. Not, mouse in the Room. David at mouseintheroom.com. Please don't spam me and put me on your mailing list without asking me, you know, Treat it. Yeah, gently. yeah, no, our people don't do that. But <laughs> if you want to reach out to me personally, that's that's how you can get in touch with me. And if you're interested in coaching, if you feel like we might be a fit, if you're a um, business owner or a leader of some kind and you want help with both business and life, that's because I'm a generalist. I deal with the whole picture. Then you can go to Mouse in the Room and click on uh, apply for a coaching session and uh, we'll have a conversation and see if, if – if it makes sense. Well, David, thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. Enjoyed the book a lot. It's got some keen insights as a result and had a discussion with you, two-part discussion that felt so very real. And I think the world needs a lot more of this. So on behalf of the entire community, I want to say thank you for being that guy that makes it real for us and helps us to understand that we can do the same and make it real for others as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ridgely. Appreciate hearing that.